Hell's Kitchen is a reality cooking competition best known for being the show in which the British dude yells angrily at people for botching food. And yeah, that's Super Chef Gordon Ramsay, and I don't exactly blame him for yelling at people who genuinely deserve it, especially when it's not over food, but their attitude. Some of these chefs can drive even a saint up the wall, and fans absolutely hate them for it. In today's video, we will talk about the Hell's Kitchen chefs who fans hated. So make sure to watch till the end. Number 6. Suzanne Schlicht Number 6 on our list is Suzanne Schlicht, who's a cautionary tale for how your social skills are as essential as your work skills. Susanna had a maddening ability to get on people's nerves by placing herself on a glowing pedestal, boasting about her culinary talent, and making awful excuses whenever she flopped at her workstation. If her food was poorly received by Ramsay, Suzanne would straight up deny her flaws in the face of the kitchen guru himself. Phew, the audacity! Suzanne was also careless, and she would drag her team's performance down and their confidence in her. What a downer, right? And it was her cocky, pompous attitude that grated on every fan's nerves. She would claim to be the Michael Jordan of her team, while the others were just her scrubs to help her out. In the signature dish challenge, Suzanne believed that her Fontaine risotto would blow Chef Ramsay away. But the dish was overcooked and tasted like chalk. Number 5. Sabrina Brimhall, Season 8 Next up on our list is Sabrina Brimhall. So you guys must have seen Rugrats, right? Do you remember Angelica Pickles, the bratty cousin of Tommy and Dill Pickles? Well, all we can say is that if Angelica ever decided to grow up to become a cook, she would be exactly like Sabrina Brimhall. And that's how much of an insufferable brat Sabrina was on Hell's Kitchen. I mean, sure, she was the youngest person on the show, but that just means that she should have tried to be mature and sensible. Instead, Sabrina acted her age around the other adults or even younger. Sabrina was ridiculously judgmental and critical of others, calling them out for their tiniest mistakes. What makes her even more annoying is that Sabrina was never helpful or keen during the prep as a prep chef which was literally her job. And the thing that made her truly despicable to fans was her habit of throwing her teammates under the bus rather than admitting to her mistakes. She would rattle off her own qualities and say who should be nominated for elimination instead of her. Classic narcissistic behavior right there, folks. And so fans were delighted when Sabrina Brimhall was the first one of the black jackets to be sent on her way home. Good riddance. Number 4. Russell Cook II If you look up sore loser in any definition, you'll find a picture of Russell Cook II there, and that's a fact. Literally, we've never seen a more egotistical and selfish chef on the show than Russell. Although he was immensely talented and even got the second position, his crappy attitude really blotted out his good qualities. Russell was highly disrespectful and foul-mouthed. He even went as far as making violent threats, like when he told his teammate that he could slap her. Man, Russell really woke up and chose violence that day, didn't he? And when he failed the last hurdle in Hell's Kitchen, he made sure everyone knew how mad he was. Not only did Russell not accept defeat with humility, but he also raged at his teammates and blamed them by saying, I chose the team that I thought would help me win, but in fact they helped me lose, so thanks a lot guys, you'll never get a job in any city I work in, and I will definitely blackball you guys because you guys messed me up so royally. Yikes. So rather than taking responsibility for not taking his brigade to victory, he also shamelessly threw them under the bus and threatened them. What a piece of work. Number 3. Jason Underwood Jason Underwood. How can anyone forget this sexist, chauvinistic jerk? The man easily takes the cake for being the most hated chef of season 4 and the whole show if we're being honest here. Jason was a misogynist who liked to belittle and demean women, and considering that his team was comprised of ladies, well. Oh, and the cherry on top, Jason lacked talent but reeked of arrogance and superiority complex. The man used to make outdated, ridiculous comments about women's status and degrade them on live television. You can see how contemptuous he was of women when he claimed that if he won the prize in Hell's Kitchen, he would have his pocket full of money and beat women out with a stick. Isn't that sickening? What's more, Jason would help during dinner service and just sit there making misogynistic comments towards the hard-working women there. 
In fact, during his first dinner service, he went out for a smoke, citing that he had urgent issues to attend to. So yeah, reliability issues with this guy were the norm. Like the only way he would lose to a woman would be in an ironing contest. All I can say is Jason Underwood was an unpleasant guy who was better suited to existing in the Victorian era. Anyway, his multiple failures as a chef were made all the sweeter when women constantly defeated him. In the end, Jason was eliminated, much to the relief of other chefs and fans alike. What Chef Ramsay said to him makes Jason's departure even better. Jason, take off your jacket and leave Hell's Kitchen. Short and savage. Number 2. Lacey D'Angelo Ah, whiny Lacey. How can we keep her off the list? In fact, she would have been number one, except that number one is even more annoying than Lacey D'Angelo. Honestly, no other contestant is more universally hated than Lacey, both by fans and other contestants. Her biggest flaws were spiraling and coming undone at the most minor inconvenience. Her self-pitying and whiny attitude didn't endear her to anyone around her. Lacey was also incredibly incompetent compared to the other contestants, and she made it worse by barely bothering to put in any hard work. In fact, she was unrepentantly lazy and honestly the least hardworking chef in the entire history of Hell's Kitchen. Lacey was such a negative downer that she could single-handedly bring her team down with whining and substandard food and servicing. She was a roadblock, a dead weight, and a weak link, and so she was sent to the blue team. But even there, Lacey continued to be a slow, incompetent complainer and quitter. And the last nail in the coffin of her show stint came when she said to Chef Ramsay, I can't cook meat, Chef. I mean, yeah, we can all see that, Lacey. Anyway, everyone sighed in relief when Lacey D'Angelo was eliminated. Number 1. Elise Wims Harris for our last Hell's Kitchen chef that fans hated, we have Elise Wims lined up for you guys. Elise has the dubious honor of being the most hated contestant on the show, and for good reasons. While Elise was one of the most talented chefs we've seen on the show, she had a funny way of showing it. Using her culinary skills as an excuse, Elise would rail at everyone and bullet them within an inch of their life. This lady had no compunctions about being obnoxious, selfish, and mean-spirited. Her loudmouth personality and scathing criticism made it very easy for fans to hate Elise Wims. Elise was a total diva who thought everyone else was beneath her, and she was way up above them on her self-appointed pedestal. What made her especially aggravating was her refusal to do any heavy lifting or menial tasks. Instead, she would stand there like a queen, with arched brows and boss everyone around like they were her personal slaves. What a lovely young lady. Elise was never eager to take one for the team, but God forbid her team did the same. Not only that, but she would also bully her teammates as if they were still in a middle school playground. We've never seen any contestant who was so unrepentant about undermining, undercutting, or sabotaging everyone just to advance her own selfish agenda. But due to her brilliance in the kitchen, many fans were worried that Elise would win the season. Thankfully, she didn't, and it was excellent payback for her poor attitude. So yeah, here's to the vile queen of Hell's Kitchen who ruled with an iron fist.